All right, YouTube, we're here to attempt to film for you another video. The video will hopefully work this time. I actually just got done filming this video, or most of it at least, about the UMX Radian um, motor for the ASK21. And as you can see here, we've got it most of the way installed and actually had the progress in the video. Well, anyway, the video didn't save for some reason. So I'm just going to take you back through. What we did was we took our, um, this happens to be a Sport Cub S UMX motor mount. And we cut a pocket to dive it down in. It's still loose. We have it more or less placed where we would like it to be placed permanently. And now we're just working out the exact angle and position so that everything looks neat when we're done. Um, because after all, that's half the battle. This is supposed to be a scale plane. Um, and on this pure glider, there wouldn't have been a motor. It would have been a towed up sort of plane. And you would have used thermals. So as you can see, one of the issues I'm working out is um, how much of a gap do I want to have I don't want it to be so tight that it's near impossible to um, guarantee crop clearance, but I don't want it to be so loose that it looks ugly. So one thing that I have to do is um, determine how, how far to run this thing on. This spinner hasn't been glued yet. I have all the little parts that I purchased. This is the uh, folding prop off of a UMX Radian, like I said and I happen to use the gearbox off of a sport cub because I had one sitting around and that worked out real nice but if you don't have one sitting around I suppose you could just order one for a radian and then instead of having tabs on the side which I had to cut at an angle to make some extra room that one lines up in a row so it would give you a, maybe a better crack at success but either way it's not that big a deal one way or another to be perfectly honest don't forget to get your slightly nose down attitude on the motor mount and then you also want it to favor a little bit to the right so you can counter any torque effect which is going to be limited but it will help the plane to fly a little bit better um, you don't want it to be so drastic that you know it's it's almost unnoticeable when the thing's flying um, and then of course you can take these things these are these aren't a rip-off at all. I mean, it's like six bucks for three of them. So, in fact, let me show you what I've got for packages, and you can kind of use this in your search at the hobby shop. This was a hobby zone part. It was five bucks. I think there's six bucks now, five ninety-nine now. This is a complete gearbox for the uh, Sport Cub S UMX. This is the uh, folding prop for the <laughs> UMX Radian. They forgot the X in there. Um, so you can see you've got the part number there and that was five bucks and then I've got these things which were five bucks ultra ultra micro radian um, and incidentally the pro has clear props and I'm probably gonna go ahead and order those but the spinners are the same it comes with three for five bucks and it's the most overpriced thing ever but if you've ever tried to make a spinner you'll understand why they cost five bucks because that's a great deal because uh, it is a lot harder than it looks to make a spinner that actually doesn't have some sort of an imbalance to it. And then this just, you literally slip it on, you get in an accident or whatever, you can go ahead and replace it fairly simple um, without too much effort. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that on there. We'll get the canopy reinstalled and we're going to see if our placement's a little bit better. So sorry that you don't get all the exact steps. Honestly, it wasn't that big a deal. Um, you probably would have been bored anyway, so you can thank my camera for saving your half an hour or whatever it was, 17 minutes. Okay, so that's that's where she's lined up, and I would say that, that that is pretty close to what I'm after. And then, of course, we'll, I don't know, we'll probably end up cutting a small piece of uh, plastic to actually go around the bottom, and then we'll pump in some product in there. Uh, whether it's epoxy or, you know, like a hot glue mixed with foam so that it's super light. Um, that's what we'll probably do. We'll probably just take the guts from what was in there before and we'll just stuff it in there and then hot glue a little bit on the bottom. And then we'll take a piece of 
uh, white plastic and melt it to shape and then we'll go ahead and use that to complete this shape. So anyway, that looks pretty good. Um, I should probably run up the motor just to make sure that everything is going to clear before we get too invested in this exact position. Um, but what we can do in the meantime is we can just go ahead and take a quick visual. If we do have a bind, we can go ahead and just trim it by hand. So I think for now what we're going to do is the first thing I'll do is I'll use hot glue to actually get that in there. Um, and that's my next step. Now, what I do to use hot glue on a model like this is pretty simple. I take my hot glue that's over here sitting in the hot glue gun, and it's not a high-low temp. It does have a low temp, but it doesn't work well. I take a regular uh, Q-tip, and I apply the glue to the Q-tip, and then I can let it cool for just a second or two before I actually apply it to my glue joint. And I'll show you that right now. So you just get that stuff out on there. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to hold this with your thumb, get it in the general proximity of where you want it, and you're just going to, you're just, oh, whoops, you're going to let that little bit drip off evidently. And you're going to get in there and just spin that thing and just kind of get that little bit of, of glue so that you've got something bonding it in place. Um, and you can just pull those little strings off later on. Just let that stuff fall everywhere. Just hold that until it's set up. Get your first point solid and then go back for some more glue. You're just gonna keep duplicating that process probably you know, three or four times until you're satisfied. But the idea behind doing it this way is that you are gonna add a little bit of weight, but it's actually a removable issue then. Um, if you try to do this with like a regular CA, you're probably gonna not be too happy about it because when you go to peel it out, it's gonna be um, it's going to be removable, but you're going to take too much of the material, and you can see how thin these sidewalls have become. This hot glue is going to give us a little bit of material um, to work with, but you have to do it while it's cooling, or it's not going to work, okay? So you can see it's not a very strong bond yet, but this will give us the ability to sort of shape things a little bit and get things to where we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep... You guys can just watch the process as I do this. Um... You just get a little bit at a time, and, and you're going to add a little weight, so just be prepared. It's going to happen. Um, the other thing is I want to get just a touch of glue onto the motor itself, and then that way that will help to uh, keep the motor from slipping out. I, I haven't historically had a big problem with the motor slipping out, but I know some people have had problems with that. So, All right, great. And once you get a, a thin layer of glue, then you can use... You can switch over to a CA product. Um, the other thing that works really nice is if you actually take and peel the cotton out, you can use the cotton as a filler, and then that will kind of backfill everywhere around there, and it'll make for a really strong mount. But then you've got the hot glue that actually made the initial contact. So you see you can pull that cotton out real easy, or you can just get cotton, uh, cotton swabs or whatever. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack this into either side, and just keeping it away from the moving parts there. And I'm going to actually use this cotton to, to make a brace up against the side here. And that's going to emulate what a properly designed foam would be doing. Because that foam, of course, would, would not leave a bunch of gaps around all this stuff. Okay, so you see how I've kind of got that shaped in there? Um, at this point, now I can go ahead and do some CA. Um, and that CA is going to get hot real quick. Even though it's foam safe, it, it usually will have a tendency of wanting to freak out and melt foam and stuff. So you want to not go too quick with this, but you got to go quick enough to make sure that the thing stays in position. So you're going to want to make sure you've got this squeezed into the position you want. We're going to have to trim a little bit. I can already tell from where this motor uh, gearbox is going to want to rub on that that uh, being the left side there. So I'm just going to get a little bit of CA coming. Okay, we'll pause it. We'll come right back. Alright guys, I, sorry, a clogged tip. Imagine that. So I'm just going to get, this is thin CA. I'm just going to get a drip or two in there. Just let it work. And uh, what you're ultimately trying to do is you're trying to kind of turn this into almost like a solid piece and then that solid piece will provide the backing for all these different uh, components 
and don't worry about how pretty it is just quite yet. I mean, at some point you can worry about that. But remember, this is always this is all going to be underneath the, the canopy. So now that you've got that in there, make sure you don't spray your, your nozzle with kicker. Give her one little kiss of kicker and let her work her magic. This stuff will turn kind of like a green or yellowish hue while it's working. Lick your finger, push those fibers down. Make sure you don't block access to your magnet. Now that stuff, believe it or not, you can take a Dremel later and you can shape it if you need to. But I'm, I'm hoping you won't need to. I'm hoping I won't need to either. Um, okay, so that's, that's there. So now that's turned just about rock hard, which is great. And it's super, it's, it's still relatively light. The only problem is the chemical reaction has heated this little thin piece of, of foam up to the point where it's kind of deteriorated a little bit. So that's an unfortunate side effect. So I'm just going to let that, I can't undo the chemical reaction, obviously. Okay, so let's see how we look. It's held in there. It's not perfect yet, obviously. Um, and nobody's saying we can't go back in and try to fix that later. You can see we got a little bit of a pullback on that styrofoam there. But it's, it's very sturdy now. So we don't have to worry about that being a strength issue. Um, so now let's go ahead and pop that back off. So now the other side, we're going to do the same thing, except we're, we're going to, maybe we won't use kicker this time, just to avoid that chemical reaction being too quick. Um, usually I don't have a problem, this is pretty stinking thin, um, you know, in terms of the, the thickness in this area. Okay, so I'm just kind of squishing that in. Just kind of get that where you think you want it to be. And obviously just make sure you stay free because you don't want that CA to chase up into the, the bearing.